on the precipice of setting Northwestern scoring after? Do you think it will mean more coming at Wells Bryant? I mean, it, it, it was always going to mean a lot, you know, and, and I think you want it to happen kind of naturally and organically and not kind of force when it was going to happen. We knew it was going to come, um, you know, just based on how he was playing and the numbers he was putting up. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, it'll be able to happen uh, tomorrow night at home. I mean, I think it's a great tribute. Anytime you can do something in front of your home fans, in front of your home students, people that have meant a lot to you, and, and also what he's meant to this place. I mean, you know, he's single-handedly this last couple years really created an excitement around this program maybe that we've never had. I mean, we've had a level of success with some winning over these past seven years, but I think when you have a dynamic All-American type talent that people love to play and the way he's done it, his, his personality, the way he's gotten better and the way he's embraced Northwestern. Um, I think it's really awesome that he'll have an opportunity to do it in front of the home crowd. What has that done for you and also for this program that's moving forward like setting that example at Northwestern? Yeah, I mean, I, I think like anything, anytime you're trying to create kind of your brand, you know, or, or your program, um, you know, you, you need to, especially in basketball, you know, to have someone that's dynamic that has the personality he's had, that's been committed to this program, when at any time you know, he could have gone somewhere else to chase it somewhere else, he's stayed loyal to this place. Um, he's become you know, probably the all-time greatest player. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, I know that, because, but, and that's no shade on other guys, but he's on the Mount Rushmore for sure of, of, of anyone that's ever played here. And just the way he's done it and the way he plays, um, it's like anything. It changes the perception a little bit. I think I think the way people view us, you know, the way he, we use him, some of the things he does on the court, some of the shot making and, and things like that, where now young players can watch us play and say, hey, man, that's, that's a fun place to play. And then you look at the crowds. I mean, the, the people have shown up to come play because of our team, but, but mainly because of him and his greatness. So, you know, what he's meant in those areas are going to be, hopefully far longer reaching uh, than some of the short-term things. And then it, it'll be on us to try to continue, you know, with that path once he's gone. But he's meant so much to this program. And it's been an honor to coach him for five. I'm glad I got five years. You know, normally you're lucky to get four, but to get five years with him has been a great journey. Coach, I know you talked about the way you played. Early in that Indiana game, obviously quick fouls. And then towards the beginning of the second half, he was frustrated, kind of slapped the floor after a missed layup. But then he's just kind of puts the switch, hits the back of that threes. What does that just say about his character and his yeah. I think it's a testament to his maturity as he's grown. Uh, I think younger Boo, you know, you get a couple fouls, you're not shooting well. I think he missed his first nine shots. Now all of a sudden it's like, you know, maybe short circuit a little bit emotionally. And, and that's where I've seen his biggest growth is maybe when things aren't going well within a game. He's been able to just continue to play and, and keep his mind into winning and playing right and continuing to do the things. And usually when that happens, when you're a really good player, it flips for you, you know, as, as the game goes on. And I think that's what you saw at Indiana. I mean, I thought as the game wore on and he kind of saw the ball go in the hole a couple times and made a couple big threes, it just really, but, but it was his mentality and his even keeled approach where he didn't let the tough start kind of affect him emotionally and completely take him out of the game. You talked after Indiana about kind of having to go to an emergency lineup towards the back end of the first half. Do you get any thoughts on maybe going back to that lineup in the future based on that success? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone has to be everyone has to be ready. I mean, I don't want Boo and Brooks to have two fouls in the first half um, like that happened the other day. I hope we can keep them on the floor, but we have confidence in those guys. I mean, that's they they came in. You know, when Boo went out of the game the other day, we were up one. You know, when he came back in in the second half, we were up by eight. So that last 11 minutes without him on the floor, we increased the lead by, by seven on the road in a tough place to play. So we have confidence in all our guys, um, you know, but certainly we want to be able to keep our main guys on the floor as much as possible if we can going forward. It's a, kind of a broad question, but how difficult is it for a player to end up on a mountain rushmore? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, it's really difficult, especially when you have, what, a 100-year history of, of, of this program. But... You know, I think not only the scoring records and, and the things like that, I, I think his legacy of winning, um, when you look at the history of this program, um, the winning that he's been able to do, and also what I what I talked about, his ability to kind of rally a fan base and excite a student body, um, he had a huge hand in that. And, and that's, 
that can really help a program for a long time, you know, and that'll be our challenge. Obviously, he's not going to be with us, you know, after this last little stretch, but, you know, he's created an excitement here uh, for Northwestern basketball um, that I don't think has ever been here before, and that's a great testament to him and how much I think people see how much he's loved this place too. You know, you can tell he's loved being here. He's loved wearing that N on his chest, and, and uh, he's really proud uh, to be a Northwestern guy. Uh, Michigan Center had season-ending surgery. Uh, it was just reported earlier today. Yeah. How does that affect your scout preparation for the Wolverines? Yeah, I mean, uh, he was a terrific player, uh, grad transfer from Tennessee. Um, you know, and, and one of the things you got to be careful of, and we're going through that a little bit, right? When, when you lose a key guy, um, teams tend to really rally around each other. And, you know, they're, they're going to come in here still with great resolve. Um, he's a really talented guy. He's one of their leading scorers. Um, they did a lot of things for him, but they have other guys, and, and obviously now they'll be a little bit more focused on some of those other guys. You know, Terrace Reed, their big guy, who's a terrific player. Namari Burnett, really good wing player. Uh, Jalen Wellen, you know, without Doug McDaniel on the road, he steps up and, and plays more. Terrence Williams, who's kind of been a thorn in our side. So other guys will, will look to step up for them, and um, I know they'll have a next man up mentality. I know how Juwan operates. I've known him since high school. So I know he's going to have those guys ready to play, and um, you know we can't we can't say oh because those two guys aren't going to be here that they're not going to be the same quality team. They're going to they're going to rally around each other. They're going to be ready to play, and we're going to have to be able to match that. And, and obviously, taking care of home right now is huge. We're in the last five games of the conference. Where I told those guys it's a sprint now. You know you're you got five games left, and and every single one of these games mean a lot because you have so many teams in the league fighting for a lot of things. Coach, obviously, you rolled out some new lineups in yeah. the first half at Indiana. Do you expect to see kind of those similar lineups going forward and how important that is? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, it just depends kind of how the game goes. Like, you don't come into a game, you know, like I, I told you guys after the game, like I never, if you would have said to me, I looked out there one time and it was, it was Ryan, Ryan Langborg at point with Blake uh, Smith, Justin Mullins, Nick Martinelli, and Blake Preston. If you would have said to me before the year that you were going to be at Indiana uh, on the road in a, in a must-win game and um, those guys were going to be playing a big stretch together as a lineup, I probably would have said I don't see that happening. But that's the beauty of how games work and teams. We had foul trouble. Obviously, we have injury with Ty. And, and it's a great testament to those guys being ready to step up. Like That's why you come every day and you tell guys to be ready. And you know, especially in Blake Smith and Justin Mullins' case, you know, they're, when you want to play, it, it is frustrating. You want to be out there, and every coach, I want to play all these guys. Like it has nothing to do with that, but you're trying to win and you're trying to figure out what's best for your team. And and I give a lot of credit to those guys for staying ready, continuing to come every day, continuing to work. And and then when their number was called on, they were ready to come out, and, and really they helped, especially on the defensive end. Coach, you mentioned how who, what, who had opportunities to go elsewhere, whether that be to other college programs or to the pros. Uh, what does it mean to you as a coach that through all the trials and tribulations of the past five years, he stayed loyal to you and stayed loyal to us? Um, it means everything. I mean, that's as a coach, you know, that's what you strive for in relationships. Um, I think that's what a lot of coaches are having a hard time with now with the way the rules are. Um, it's very difficult now to, to have that same level of going through the journey together. You know, because I know my own journey as a player, it wasn't all rosy. I mean, there were amazing ups and downs throughout the journey. But when you stay the course and you stick with your coach and, and, and you get to the other side at the end, you look back and you're grateful for all those times, good and bad. And you don't see that as much anymore in college basketball, which, which, which I don't like. You know, it's a part of it that, that I don't like because I, I love the development part. And for Boo to be able to stay here for five years, to go through some tough times, and to say, you know what, I'm going to see this thing through because I, I believe we can get to the other side. And not only to believe that, but then to go out and do it, you know, with these group of guys, um, you know, it's something I'll, I'll always be indebted to him for. And because of that, we're always going to have an incredible relationship. I, I told him I'm, I'm sad I only get to coach him, you know, whatever, five. We, we know we have a Big Ten tournament game, so we have six games, and then whatever we earn after that, that's the last uh, time I get to be his coach. But it'll be really cool to kind of step back and then just be a part of his journey as, as his friend and mentor going forward. Experience is such a huge thing, especially come March. Have you noticed your guys handling things in a different way than maybe last year since they've kind of been here? Yeah, I, I think the guys have a pretty good resolve to them, pretty good confidence. 
Um, when we when we went through it for the first time, it was very overwhelming because it had never been done. And every single day, everywhere those guys turned, it was like, are you guys going to do it? Are you going to do it? Are you going to get there? And that can that can really add pressure to the situation. You know, I, I feel like with our guys, we've really attacked kind of each game one at a time. That's kind of been our focus is all these games are tough. Like, let's, let's attack each one of these things. And then at the end of 20, we'll get what we deserve. And, you know, certainly we have both. We want to play in March. We know that. We, we want to be a factor in the Big Ten race. You know, we... We have five games to go and, and an opportunity to do some really good things, you know, in terms of the conference if if we can find some wins here. And I think that's really been our focus. And, and our guys have done a good job. And that's where the leadership, you know, you said. I mean, Boo haven't gone through it. Ty gone through it. Uh, Brooks being a big part of it last year. Matt Nicholson. You know, I think when you've been through it and had the experience, you're better off going through it the second time. Yeah, I mean, we're a little bit different team. You know, I, I think there's been positives and minuses. I mean, we've lost a little bit of spacing and shooting, of course, uh, with what Ty brings. But, you know, I think the thing that uh, we have done is we've gotten a little bit bigger and more physical. So we've been a little bit better in terms of being on the glass. Um, you know, we've been a little bit bigger in terms of our rim protection defensively. Um, so I think there have been some positives, kind of that you know bigger lineup, but but we're different. I mean, Ty's ability to run off screens when you had him and Ryan and those guys with Boo, you know, it, re it made us very dangerous and potent offensively with our spacing and shooting. And now we just kind of kind of find have to do it a little bit different way, and that happens with injuries, and you go through that. And, and I've always thought as a coach, that's what your your job is to do. Okay, this is the group I have. How can we be successful with it? What are the pieces we have, and how can we make it work? And that's what we're trying to do with these guys we have now the rest of the way. Coach, I know you're talking about the boost growth from young to now mature. But, and then you talked about your journey with him. What has he done for you as a coach in terms of making you a better coach and seeing it from, from their perspective? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's done a lot. I mean, your relationship with your point guard, it's like in football they say, you know, with the quarterback, you know, a point guard and a coach have to be connected at the hip. You know, they have to, it doesn't mean you don't disagree. It doesn't mean you don't come, you know, get get on him at times when he's not doing the thing. But but I feel like the point guard and the coach, you can have a really good team when those two guys are, are aligned, you know. And, and we've done that at a really high level the last couple years. And, you know, so because of that, our relationship, you know, and, and, and there's the thing that I've really loved is his ability to trust me um, as, as a coach. You know, that's not always easy for a player. You know, to, to give full trust that a coach is going to have your back, is going to push you, is going to make demands of you, and then for you to accept it and and how he's grown from that and grew from that. So, um, you know, and he's just when you have a guy like that and you watch him play and you watch him grow, it, it as a coach when you've been doing it for a long time, it keeps your excitement there. You know, I mean, he's he's kept me excited, you know, about coaching and teaching and leading, and and um, that's it's it's been a really fun. Journey to be a part of with him. Coach, sorry, sorry, you already talked about yeah. Food, but what, just what is the overall mix of this program? Yeah, he's been a lot. I mean, uh, you know, he's not only as a player, I mean, he's going to go down and, you know, he's going to have tons of records as a player, but his legacy as a winner, you know, and, and, and I think what he's meant to bring attention to this program. When you have an All American type talent, um, it's a big reason why the seats are full now. People, they want to see him play. There, there's an excitement. You know, people are talking about Northwestern basketball. And, you know, a lot of people have a hand in that. But, but his, the way he plays, the flair he plays with, some of his late game heroics, some of those things, he's, he's brought a real excitement to this place that hopefully we can build off. And then, you know, you look back like, man, he was the guy that kind of hopefully got us over the hump to consistent success going forward. Coach, after a win at Indiana, it's your second conference road win of the year. You're now playing this year, and it's currently last in the conference. How do you kind of avoid a kind of side relief game or kind yeah. of letting up off the gas? Yeah, it's the, you can't do that at all in this league. I mean, you just saw Ohio State beat Purdue, you know, everyone, you know, three days ago or whatever. I mean, every team in this league can beat anybody if you're not ready to play, if you're not ready wherever the game is, if you're not into it mentally. If you're not focused, if you're not locked in, every single team in our league has good players and has talent to beat you. And, you know, our guys, that's where you trust the leadership of your guys. You can't look at records. Like, records can't matter. It's, okay, we're facing this Michigan team. Here's what they do well. 
here's just some things we want to do to try to approach this game and how we have to defend and how we have to try to attack them. And you can't focus on, well, they've had some struggles or a couple guys are hurt or things of that nature. I mean, we just had a game the other night. We just talked about the lineup we had on the floor, and we still won. I mean, we, had a, we had a lineup on the floor you guys would never think that would be out there and, and help us win a game, but they did because they were ready and they were focused and they went out and they played well. Michigan has the same thing. So uh, our guys have to, there's, there's only five games left. I mean, this isn't like, you know, January or first part of, you know, where you're in the dog days. This is, this is the time when you got to, the teams that really kind of go to the next level or the ones that understand you got to take it to another gear now that you hit these last five games of the season. All right, guys. Thanks, guys.